Tom. I've got a traumatic story from this morning to report. Go on then. I was woken up by the sound of a bee and a bee had gotten onto my windowsill and I'm scared of bees. They're like my phobia and I had to <gasps> bravely trap it in a glass and throw it out the window. But oh my God. Oh it my It was a harrowing. Life. I woke up thinking it was like a lawnmower or something and I was like, what's that? And then, oh, uh, oh. Did the bee at least ask you if you like jazz? No, it didn't do that. Uh, that's absolutely frustrating that's very frustrating and i know that people are here to hear the wrestling news and they don't like it when we do really long introductions so tell me a bit more about the bee no it's okay <laughs> it's okay we can it's... crack on if you want no i want to talk more about no, the bee. Come on. <laughs> when did you when did you when did you realize you had a, a phobia of bees oh i can't even remember it's been something i've been scared of since childhood easily oh bless yeah. you mate did you get stung as a child then I've never been stung, which I think may be a contributing factor. Maybe, so maybe you're stung. waiting for it. You're waiting for yeah, it. Yeah, maybe. That could maybe. be it. I know people are here for wrestling news. So when you think you get stung by a bee, uh, do you think that will help you over your fear eventually? I don't know, but yeah, probably. Do you need probably, to make it so you get stung no, by a bee? Do we need no, to encourage to that, that to happen? As much as that would do good for you know views and everything, I don't want to. I don't want to submit myself to that. I think it'd be great for views. I'm just saying. Um, we we need to get to the wrestling news. So, have you got any other phobias? No, bees is the. I think bees is the only one that I can think of. Just bees. Okay, yeah. that's fine. Oh, well, and clowns for the purposes oh, well, well, of the video let's, ones. Let's, let's dig no, into this. Was a video let's dig into this. It. Well, we had to. We had all like submit something we were scared of for the WrestleMania punishments one year. And I think I was off the day that the phobias were decided. So instead of my real phobia, I got uh, clowns got put forward in the comments where everyone saying, why is Jack scared of clowns? Or more annoyingly, <laughs> of course Jack's scared of clowns. <laughs> we should get to the wrestling news. But yeah. when it comes to clowns, um, do you feel that you... Uh, has What is it about clowns you think that people are frightened by? Is it, just, is, the, is it the makeup and the overbearing nature of them? Possibly, I really don't know. I'm not personally scared of clowns myself, but it's been public knowledge that I am, apparently, for the past few years. <laughs> All right, we'll get to the wrestling news now. After, no, we'll definitely do it now. CM Punk slams terrible WWE television and has responded to a New Japan Pro Wrestling challenge. An NXT star has teased a match on Monday Night Raw and a former WWE star has announced their retirement. We'll talk about them in a little bit. Look in my eyes, what do you see? CM Punk in the news, yippee. So two bits of interview based goodness from cm punk this week that has certainly got the internet talking once again uh, one about the challenge thrown out by will osprey for new japan pro wrestling we'll get to that in just a moment uh, but when asked about a ww return by sports illustrated what did cm punk have to say this week jack well he explained no and explained why it's a no as well which is quite interesting he said i've said no before in interviews i'm not fishing for a deal i get offered to do a lot of stuff and i say no to 90 percent of it because my thing is i need to work with quality human beings it just seems like maybe in pro wrestling there's a lack of quality human beings i don't know i like doing fun quality projects if there's a fun quality wrestling project that gets sent my way i will listen to it but he goes on to, to elaborate saying I don't need the money, and the way the wrestling business is now, it's wacky. You've got WWE who has multiple billion dollar TV deals, and the television's awful. If I go back there, I'm just another guy. And it's not even that, I'd, just, I'd be just another guy that's doing not good television. I wanna do stuff that's good, I want my name attached to quality projects where it's fun, and it makes people laugh, smile, think, and people don't hate watching it. I wanna do fun stuff, he says. I think that's been his uh, his argument all the way through, is that if he's going to come out of wrestling, it's going to be for more than just to pop a buy rate following a Royal Rumble or something. He's going to want to come back and do something that's different, that's fresh. And one of those offers on the table is from Will Ospreay, the new IWGP champion. And he uh, put out the challenge to CM Punk for a little dust-up in New Japan. And CM Punk discussed this in an interview with Digital Spy. He said, quote, I don't want to give people false hope in answering Osprey, but he is for sure somebody that I've never wrestled before that interests me a lot more than, I guess, the corporate side of professional wrestling nowadays. New and different things are going to interest me more than doing the same old, same old. I always need new goals. I don't know. And then he ends this, Jack, by saying, let's see if he has it at the end of the summer. And then ask me the question again. So just that like a no. 
Uh, well, I'd just like to congratulate Osprey on securing another few months of his title reign there because New <laughs> Japan will maybe have seen that and gone, right, we're keeping the belt on him just in case. Look, Punk's he's still here. He's yeah. still here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, see, that's not a no. That's a very much not a no from CM Punk, isn't it? Mm, it's not a no, but I, I think the way that CM Punk is, obviously he's very hesitant to get involved with anything in wrestling again for the reasons that he's just outlined there. But maybe he tried to think of it in more of a long-term kind of thing because once he's had this match with Osprey, presumably he would lose, I'm guessing anyway. And then what is there beyond that? You know, maybe it would just be a kind of a one-off thing unless he, so, unless he won, which would certainly make waves in the wrestling world. But I don't know. I don't know. We could be seeing possibly CM Punk having one match in New Japan. We could possibly be seeing an NXT star getting one match on Monday Night Raw. Who are we talking about, Jack? We're talking about Pete Dunne, who is teasing us because uh, Seamus put out a tweet saying, open challenge to anybody willing to step in the ring and take my US title. And then Pete Dunne responded with, uh, well, a gif of himself doing his Pete Dunne kind of expressions, uh, implying that he wants to take on Seamus for the US title. Now, Pete Dunne's a very brave boy because, I mean, if this were to go through and if WWE were to pay attention and go, yeah, that's a good matchup, which it is 100%, that would mean that Pete Dunne would be moving surely to the main roster. And as we know, that's not the safest place for promising NXT stars <laughs> to, to wind up. So I think I understand why Pete Dunne's doing it. Obviously, a lot of ambition. He seems to have a lot of favor backstage in WWE amongst people like Triple H, who's a big fan, Regal, who's a big fan. But I don't know if this would be the best move for him quite yet. But then again, when is it ever going to be a safe move for someone from NXT to move to Raw? So there's a lot of factors going into this. There's a lot of things at play here. Exactly. And the US Championship Open Challenge thing is something that Sheamus announced on Monday Night Raw this week. It's something that's mm. going to be a part of uh, programming over the next uh, few weeks, possibly the next few months, on, on a show that has really had a funny old time in the ratings uh, we had a lift post wrestlemania and it seems as if that lift has now uh, been well dropped jack yes uh so this monday's raw's viewership obviously just decreased from last week showbiz daily is reporting that they drew an average of 1.9 million viewers on the usa network which is down from the 2.02 million viewers just a week ago uh, and obviously that was a huge increase that initial rating because of wrestlemania but now i think we're experiencing that drop off again and I just wonder how severe the drop off's going to be because some years you might think that they could retain some viewers that have come back with quality or exciting post WrestleMania angles and storylines. But as a lot of people have mentioned this year, the Raw After Mania was quite nondescript relative to other Raws After Mania. So I wonder what that's going to do with the rating in future weeks. It could be, I'm not, this is just speculation, but they could be in for a little bit of a bumpy ride maybe. It's that third hour again that brings it down. Uh, Show Buzz giving us the breakdown of each of the hours. Uh, just over 2 million for, for 8 o'clock. Uh, just under 2 million for 9 o'clock. And by 10 o'clock down to 1.7, which is um, that that third that third hour just drags it constantly. And it's not just a case of, well, get rid of the third hour because whilst, uh, whilst um, Vince McMahon isn't shy of a couple of bob, uh, the, there's a lot of money and sponsorship tied up in advertising and such for that third hour. So it's not just a case of going, we're only going to do three hours, we're going to do two hours now as opposed to three. You know, you've made a commitment to the USA Network to give three hours of uh, of new content every week on that show. It's just a case of trying to find a way that keeps people watching. Mm. And so far, they've, I think any show would struggle to keep the outside of a film would struggle to keep the attention of the audience for three hours yeah. like you think of you you think that you know some of the, the even things like game of thrones like at its height an episode was no more than maybe an hour for that right. and uh and i would imagine that the, the ratings were an interesting journey with that but a three-hour wrestling show which is already not the hottest it's been like three hours during the attitude era i think even then it would have struggled yeah I mean, What's the story? How do you? How do, I'm, not, I'm not telling you. I'm not asking you to fix it, Jack. Because it's, it's a it's a big ask. But how do you fix that third hour of Raw problem? I really don't know. I think, as you mentioned, the easiest way would just be to shorten the show. But they can't do that because of the mm. amount of money that a three hour show will be bringing in. So maybe it's just a case of trying to, I guess, just trying to improve the quality of Raw overall. Because recently, I feel like Raw especially has felt a little bit all over the place. We've heard reports of Vince arriving late, changing the show at the last minute. Whereas SmackDown, with its 
more concise runtime also has the benefit of slightly more coherent storytelling. So I think it's just the, the boring old answer of just try and improve the quality of what we're seeing on screens. Exactly. And finally, we thank the, we say farewell rather. He's not, he's not leaving the planet. He's just done with wrestling. A former WWE star has announced their retirement from in-ring activity. We are talking about Ken Doan this morning, the former Kenny from the Spirit Squad, the former Kenny Dykstra, who put out a tweet saying, I've decided to retire from in-ring wrestling. When I started at 13, I thought I'd retire at 40, but smart investments over time have allowed me to be done now. I'm in my prime and that will go towards my family and being a father thanks to the fans who stuck by me he started wrestling at 13 jack yeah that's crazy i was also surprised that he was uh, as young as he is i thought he would be about 40 but no he's he's in his 30s and i thought wow that's quite he must have been so young when he first burst onto the scene um and i'm pleased for him i'm pleased that he's in a position where he can retire from wrestling and can you know be financially secure because he was one of those people who i feel like deserved a bit more of a chance in WWE, especially with the breakup of the Spirit Squad, it looked like he was going to be the breakout star. Obviously, that became, you know, in a way, in a roundabout sort of way, that became Dolph Ziggler. Um, and I feel like Kenny maybe didn't fulfill his potential, but I'm glad that he's been able to get himself in a position where he's able to retire from wrestling. And yeah. hopefully, you know, he just has a happy time with his family. That's the dream, isn't it? To retire on your own terms. Yeah, absolutely. That's even what though, we yeah, want to do. Even though he hasn't perhaps enjoyed as glittering a career as maybe we were predicting back in the day, I still think he, he sounds fairly satisfied with how things have gone, and that's nice. A career that was relatively short and relatively sweet uh, for Ken Doan in the grand scheme of things. And proof that you don't need to be here for a long time to have a good time can be found at youtube.com slash cultaholic, where we rank the 10 shortest wrestling pay-per-view matches ever. And there's some beauty Oh, is that there. going up? That's on. Is it on? I wrote that script ages ago. Oh, <laughs> I've seen look at that. Oh, I'm so excited. That's wonderful. It was a long wait for a short video. Is it Adam on the uh, Adam on the voice? I'm sure he's done a good of job. Of course it is. Yeah. I, sometimes, <laughs> I sometimes tailor my writing if it's Adam and try and get him to say cringy things. <laughs> oh, look for cringy things at no, YouTube.com. So, he, he hasn't always... Sorry to just... But he, I don't think there were any in this script particularly, oh. but there was, a, there was a period of time where I'd try and slip in for every one of Adam's scripts that I wrote uh, a reference to the band the House Martins and Caravan <laughs> Caravan of Love. And then I'd go and watch the video back and get to the point where I mentioned, like, it was a match almost as good as the House Martins, Caravan of Love. But he would never mention it. He'd just skip over it. And I'd be like, ah, oh, oh, you know. What we have to do together is, is do it so when you write scripts for Adam, put lyrics to Caravan of Love in different parts so eventually we can piece them together. Yeah, uh, it's like he sang yeah. Caravan. It's, it, we're playing a long game with that one, <laughs> but I, I think point, it'd be worth it. I should point out as well that we, just for anybody wondering the, the kind of behind the scenes workings of Cultaholic, sometimes we write our own scripts, sometimes we write scripts for others. And I do want to give a huge shout out to Justin Henry, who writes mm. a lot of the scripts that I do because he is a fantastic wrestling historian and a great writer as well. So I, I feel like I do try and give him credit whenever a video goes up, but I feel like he always deserves more. So Justin Henry and, and he's on Tom's uh, raw review as well he is indeed so you can hear his dulcet tones on a tuesday and you can you can hear his dulcet words written through the mouth of sam and or jack and or others excellent writer little clap for justin henry hey. a little clap to justin henry love you mate stay safe love you bye